two, three. So we have a quorum, so we'll call the meeting to order. Um, and the first thing is the roll call. Stephanie. Yeah. Uh, Marta Larson. I'm present and I'm uh, participating from Northfield Township, Michigan. Marie Grass. Present I'm calling from the drop off line in Milan, Michigan. Elizabeth Thompson. Present participating from Ypsilanti Township, Michigan. Okay, and Ellen Offen. Oh. Ellen, you're muted. Sorry, I didn't think I was. Uh, present from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. And Steve Stein. Yeah, hi, present. Calling this time from uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. Ooh. I was just there. <laughs> oh, nice. We and Ma name. Margaret Reynolds. Present, calling in from Pittsfield Township. Okay, and I do not see Jason yet. Um, and then also, Delois Wilson has an unexcused absence, and Bennett Stark has an excused absence. And you do have a quorum. You said Bennett was excused? Yes, some health things. Okay, thank you. Uh, I see that we have two members of the public present. Uh, it's now time for public participation. So if either of you would like to uh, make any comments, you can feel free to raise your hand and I will call on you. Seeing no hands raised, we will uh, move on to the next agenda item, um, which is commission response to public participation. We've had no participation, so we don't need to have any response. The next item on the agenda is a uh, report from the Board of Commissioners, and I do not see Jason present. Peter, did you have something? I can offer one quick report that I know is, is about to come through. Um, next week is the Board of Commissioners last uh, scheduled meeting of the year. Um, and typically agendas post the, the Friday uh, before a meeting. Um, so I know a lot of y'all applied for a reappointment to the commission. Uh, that is something that is usually voted on and approved at the last meeting of the year, so next Wednesday. So I just wanted to let y'all know that um, I anticipate today a, a list of likely appointments um, being posted online with, uh, unless something goes off. I know we had a, a record number of submissions this year. Um, across all commissions. So it might take a little bit longer to process, but uh, most of you will have like uh, a communication from the county uh, about next year's appointments um, and a, a potential uh, new composition of the Commission on Aging uh, by Wednesday at the latest next week. So just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing that. That was definitely on the list of questions for Jason. Um, I think what we're going to do is hope that he joins us later and we'll come back to this agenda item at that time. So the next thing on our agenda is the um, approval of minutes. So I think we need a motion for that. I move that we approve the minutes. A second. Okay, so moved by Ellen, supported by Margaret. Are there any uh, discussion? Is there any discussion? If not, Stephanie, will you call the roll? Yeah. Uh, Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Marie, you're muted if you're trying to talk. She might be busy. Why don't you I come back? Yeah, yeah, I'll come back. Um, Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Ellen Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'll abstain. Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Okay, and Marie Gress? Yes. Okay, the minutes are approved. Thank you. Uh, next on the um, item on the agenda is subcommittee updates. And the first two um, subcommittees, communication and needs assessment are both Marie. So Marie, it's your turn to talk. Uh, for communications, we have the 2022 progress report to the, which we'll be discussing. Um, and no new update, the needs assessment subcommittee. Okay, thank you. Is there any report from the, are, are there any questions? <laughs> Probably not. 
Okay, is there uh, a report from the ARPA subcommittee? No. Okay, and is there a report from the potential millage subcommittee? I'm not aware of any. But... No. <laughs> okay, so the next item on the agenda is the letter to the county commissioners regarding Peter Lindemann and uh, Elizabeth, you're gonna handle that. Yes, um, last uh, meeting, uh, we, uh, voted to send a communication to the county commission expressing our great appreciation for Peter Lindemann in advance of him uh, heading off to uh, new endeavors. And so the uh, officers drafted uh, a letter. Um, Marta, do we need to approve the actual letter since we already approved the idea of it or just share it? I think we just need to share it because uh, I think the letter may have already been sent. Um, yeah, so Good. Stephanie, can you? Stephanie, if you could yeah. uh, share it. Yes, no problem. This is our big chance to embarrass the heck out of Peter. Yes. <laughs> okay. is, that, is that large enough? Would you like me to zoom in? And I'll uh, read it. If I may, uh, the Washtenaw County Commission on Aging would like to express our great appreciation for Peter Lindemann's work as a county staff liaison to our commission. He's been assigned to our commission since its inception and has served as an invaluable resource, guiding us through learning and developing policies and procedures. He has been especially helpful in making our, making our meetings conducted smoothly and efficiently in a virtual environment that was new and unfamiliar to many. Peter has always been available to answer our questions, make suggestions, and support us in any way possible. We will miss his considerable knowledge of county government and his patience and facilitation skills, which played an invaluable role in the commission's success. We wish him much success in all his future endeavors. And obviously from the Washtenaw County Commission on Aging. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I think you can stop sharing now, Stephanie. Um, are there any members of the commission that wish to make a comment before we move ahead on the agenda? I miss you, Peter. Thank you so much for all you do. Peter. <laughs> yeah, Me Peter. Too. Me too. We Really appreciate your commitment and dedication. And I'm sure that all citizens of Washington County are, are really, uh, if they knew you, they would appreciate you. Thank you all so much. Uh, that's that's extremely kind. I, I really uh, enjoyed working with you all for the last couple of years. It's been super exciting to see a, a new board and commission kind of bring bring new life and energy for what a what a board and commission can do and y'all have certainly covered a lot of ground and I, I, I am proud and thankful to have been able to be a part of it um and uh wish y'all all the best um for those of you who are continuing on next year keep up the good work um for uh those of you who have decided not to apply um uh, best luck in your future endeavors as well it's it's been wonderful so thank you all so much I missed last meeting, Peter. Did you did you announce where you're going? Uh, I'll I'll be uh, doing uh, health and human services work at a uh, uh, consulting firm out of Lansing. They do a lot of work with the state uh, government, and then have been branching into more local governments. Uh, do a lot of like policy research, program evaluation, uh, stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'll be I'll be starting there in like ten days. So uh, that's great. Quick turnaround. I'm very lucky to have you. Uh, congratulations, Peter. Um, okay, I see that Jason has joined us. So we're going to back up on the agenda to report from the Board of Commissioners um, before we proceed on the rest of the agenda. So Jason, it's you're up. Thank you, Marta. I appreciate it. I apologize for joining late. I have a Board of Directors meeting at work today that I'm uh, doing some last minute scrambling on. So I apologize for being late. Uh, I, I'll uh, offer my uh, Thanks and congratulations to Peter as well in this forum of the, we've done that at the Board of Commissioners and uh, uh, I think the the general public obviously has no idea the amount of work uh, 
that's done by somebody like in, in Peter's position and Peter has absolutely excelled in what he has done um, for the board of commissioners. And uh, I personally greatly appreciate um, everything that he has done and brought to that position and best of luck to you. I, I suspect Peter, I, I may be seeing you in my day job world uh, at some point with your, with your new employment. So um, uh, congratulations on the new job. Uh, I will say that the county commission is uh, really kind of moving to the year end process, the term end process here. Um, we did do a number of things at the last meeting, um, you know, with a but with the budget uh, for the year uh, in, in setting that up um, going forward. Uh, not much coming up as we're not doing any first readings uh, on anything as we only have one more meeting uh, this coming Wednesday. Um, so I think we're really kind of entering this transition period where we're going from one term to the next and um, we'll be deciding uh, in early, uh, I think at our either the first or second meeting in January, how the um, assignments to the various committees and authorities and commissions are going to be handled and who's going to be on what uh, in January uh, in terms of the members of the county commission. So um, uh, I've been... If for some reason I weren't to be reappointed to this body, I, I uh, want to express my uh, uh, thanks uh, to everybody who's been involved here. For those of you who are returning and those of you who are not returning, uh, potentially, um, for the work that you've done. As Peter said, uh, you, you've covered a lot of ground uh, in your time as, as a body, and uh, I greatly appreciate the energy that's been brought to this process. Um, I will say, I know that at the last meeting I uh, had said I would uh, share some bylaw edits um, that we had talked about perhaps around the composition of the Commission on Aging and in uh, discussing that a little bit further um, after that meeting. Uh, I, think, I think my process is going to be doing it after the first of the year um, with the new Commission on Aging on board uh, and the new set of uh, the County Commission on board uh, for that process to happen. Uh, I have, um, uh, yeah, I think a way that this can be done that would not impact anybody that's going to be appointed um, uh, this coming next week um, and would actually be some perhaps additions to the process. So um, I don't think there's really any impact on anybody that will be serving and, and look forward to, to giving you uh, a document in, in January. I, I, think I'll be reappointed to, to be the liaison here. So um, uh, and moving forward at that point. And uh, rather than kind of trying to rush something right at the end here, mm -hmm. um, wanted to take the time and do it the right way uh, with, the, with the administration as well. So um, with that, uh, I don't have a whole lot to add in terms of um, things relevant to the Commission on Aging, but we'd be happy to answer any questions anybody might have. Okay, um, we'll let people raise their hand. Um, I see that Elizabeth has her hand up already, so we'll let you start. Hi, Jason. Um, I was wondering if you had any further updates about how the um, county administration is moving about developing a process for awarding mm -hmm. those ARPA funds. Yes, so um, so we're talking about the $4 million specifically for yeah. the seniors. Uh, I do not have an update. I believe there was a uh, discussion about who was going to evaluate. Uh, and again, I did repeat my request that uh, at least one member, if not more of this body be part of that process. Um, Peter, I don't know if you have any update on the, the, our, the kind of the proposal process for that, but I'm not aware, Elizabeth, of any um, movement on the evaluation side at this point. Peter, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, so I can offer a, a brief update. I do know one of the things I was working on um, and I'm wrapping up before I leave is the content of the RFP. So actually getting the document ready to go and be released. Um, it's pretty much ready to go and be re released. There was a discussion about what is the right time to do that as we're entering a time when there's a lot of people on and off and it can be really hard to submit proposals in December. So there was a discussion now that we have kind of the language solidified, um, potentially releasing it at the very start of 2023. 
um, so that by the time we're ready to review, um, uh, we've, we've kind of made the, the transfer to the 2023 year. Um, there'll be a new Commission on Aging members involved so that by the time there's any sort of evaluation of proposals, y'all have been onboarded. Um, so I would expect uh, a decent bit of movement and for it to move pretty fast and quickly in early 2023 um, once once the holidays have, have cleared and everyone, both at the county and at all of the partners who may be applying for these funds are, are back in the office. So I, I would say that uh, 2023 is going to start off with a, a lot of work on this front. Thank you. I will add, Martin, if I could, um, we've been doing these RFP process with some of the other ARPA funds and they have proven to take a lot longer, I think, than intended or mm -hmm. hoped for, I should say. Um, so I, I don't think it's, there, there should be any alarm or concern about this. I, I just, as we've gone through the distribution of these funds and dollars, we, we have to comply with federal requirements and, and some state requirements and our county processes. And it's just, it's taken a little bit longer than we've hoped for. Um, but I think we, we want to get it right and make sure that we are, um, when, you know, when we put these sizable dollars in the community, we want to make sure we're doing it the right way and in a very thoughtful way. So I think that's excellent. Stephen? Um, yeah, Jason, I was just wondering in regards to the potential millage, um, is there any movement on that? And then maybe since we had that presentation by Seth, Say Yes to Seniors, I was wondering if maybe you can fill us in on where they are as well. So both from the commission's point of view and from say yes to seniors point of view. Um, from my seat on the county commission, there hasn't been no discussion of the senior millage since we passed the uh, instruction to the county administrator to bring back to us in 2023, the uh, his kind of um, suggestion for a plan to potentially expend those dollars, what we would use them for, how we would use them um, on the administrative side. So I think really we're in a stage where we're kind of, time has just got to pass into 2023 and we got to get that report from the administrator, which I believe that his timeline for submitting that is the second quarter of the calendar year. Uh, and then we're gonna have a, a county commission with a third of the members being brand new. Um, so, I, I really kind of pointed to the moment that that report comes in uh, from the administrator as kind of the next kind of stage for the millage discussion. Um, so I, I would not expect much to happen on that um, through the winter. And, and how about from say yes to seniors? Is there, can you give us any follow-up? Um, I, I will let you know that I um, have not been to the last few say, say yes to seniors meetings because I have a work conflict now at that time. Um, so I have not been in contact with them by voice. So I, I really can't provide much of an update um, in terms of what they're discussing or thinking right now, just because I haven't attended their meetings. Okay, thank you. Okay, is there anything, anyone else who has any questions for um, Jason? Looks like we're good. Thank you very much. Marta, uh, Marta, I just want to let you know, I, like I said, I do have a board of directors meetings today and I, I got to jump off in a couple of minutes here. But um, if I had been uh, present at the time, I would have voted yes on the minutes as well. <laughs> hey, you know, um, Marta, can I ask one other question? Yes, you can. Thank you. Um, Jason, one, one question, just because, of course, the Area Agency on Aging in general is also a big funding source to support. Um, older adult services. I was wondering, could you share with us anything about um, state and federal dollars to the Area Agency on Aging lately, the, you know, in regards to either increased funding, decreased funding, anything that we could do to support our, you know, AAA-1B in, in their goal of serving older people? Sure. Uh, a couple of things really quick. Um, the two major pots of money, the one of them is the Older Americans Act side, uh, which funds um, a lot it, it services in the community like care management and uh, community living supports, uh, I think is what OMB calls it, um, in addition to the, the traditional services, uh, meals, programs, et cetera. Uh, that was pretty much flat 
uh, funded, I believe, for 23. Um, not a huge um, change there. What's, what's different now is the American Rescue Plan Act dollars uh, is that um, you know, each area agency on aging has received a pot of money. And I apologize, I don't know what 1B's pot, how big that is. Um, but it is a, a pot of money that they can um, put into programs and services and, and operations um, over the next, uh, what are we at now, uh, 22 months. Uh, so that has been a benefit. Um, but I would say in terms of the regular programs and the regular funding, no huge increases there. Uh, those have been pretty flat. Um, I would say if you want to get involved, and help out and advocate on that, the first thing you should do is subscribe to AAA1B's newsletter called The Advocate, uh, which is put out. Now, so you're getting that monthly update. I think they do it monthly. Up, the, one of them just, uh, the most recent edition just came out like two days ago. Uh, and to, uh, so you get that information connection to AAA1B uh, to know what they're emphasizing and working on. Um, they also have uh, an advisory council um, and I don't know the status of um, their membership from Washtenaw County, but that's another great place to be engaged with them and understand what they're trying to work on. Um, on occasion, and I know we have a, a, a good um, uh, a member of uh, uh, something called the Michigan Senior Advocates Council. Uh, I think for 1B, I don't know if they have any open seats or not, but that's a body that for somebody that really wants to be involved in advocating on state level issues, on a regular basis, this group called the Michigan Senior Advocates Council meets monthly. They get updates on state issues and then they go and talk to legislators about those aging issues. And um, again, I don't know if 1B has any vacancies on that right now, but um, that's, a, that's a way to become really involved. But if, if, you, if you subscribe to the advocate and get that information, they're also gonna let you know when you know, they need an email push or an advocacy push or make a phone call to a legislator. Um, by being part of that, that network and, and receiving that information, you can become engaged with what 1B is trying to do. So that, those would be my suggestions. That's extremely helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, I see Elizabeth has her hand up. Yeah. As a member of this uh, uh, State Advisory Council on Aging, uh, at our meetings, we get regular updates from the state office as well as the State Commission on Aging. And one of their big focuses is um, looking at reimbursement for the direct care workforce and advocating on the state level that um, increases that were put in place for during the pandemic uh, stay in place and actually are increased, um, not only just for um, services provided through the My Choice waiver, but other um, state funded uh, direct care programs. And they are also working on trying to um, improve training opportunities and a career path for direct care workers. They have a task force um, and uh, I can, on the state level, involving um, uh, funders, providers, and researchers, and I can certainly um, share information as I get that about their movement in advocacy. You can also look up on the web the Area Agency on Aging Association of Michigan. Uh -huh. uh, which has a platform on state issues. Uh, uh, Elizabeth just mentioned um, uh, her work on the State Commission on Aging. They have an advocacy yep. um, uh, focus as well. I think four different areas. Uh, uh -huh. And then you've got AAA1B, which has their own advocacy platform um, that they put out as well. And all these things kind of mesh together. Uh, the direct care workforce that Elizabeth talked about, transportation issues, funding for care management meals. All these things are kind of uh, crossed between these different organizations, but there's um, you know, a lot of, lot of information out there about what's going on at the state level and what the priorities are. So I would direct you to those resources as well. Elizabeth is a very busy person. I see her pop up in all kinds of places. So it's uh, <laughs> great to have you on the Commission on Aging as well. 
Thank you. And I'd be happy to um, pull together and share with Stephanie some of those um, advocacy positions for MSAC and uh, the the state um, AAA um, association and so on. And I'll share those with Stephanie who can then it, share them. Okay, I see Stephanie has her hand raised. Before we do that, um, I'm looking at the number of people present at this meeting and I'm concerned that when Jason leaves, we're going to lose quorum. Is that, am I counting correctly? If we'll that's the five. case, I, if that's the case, I can hang on and maybe just understand I'm here, but maybe I'm not listening to every word that's going on. <laughs> well, it's just that we're taking up the annual report later in the meeting, and yeah. um, uh, we can't. If we don't have a quorum, we won't be able to adopt it. We'll have five even without Jason, and with the two missing seats, five is our quorum. Five is a quorum. I thought six. It was when we had those two seats. So my understanding was since we don't have those seats where our quorum is one more than half of the people um, that are currently um, appointed. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Uh, Peter, if, I, if, if that's incorrect, let me know. But I thought that that was right. That is correct. It's based yeah. on current membership, not maximum membership. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So that's we will be okay. So Jason, you're, you're safe to depart when you have to go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I see Stephanie has her hand up, so oh. you're next. Yeah, all I was going to say is that thanks, Jason, for all of the pushes. Um, in the minutes, I will include links to everything that Jason mentioned. I'll uh, include a way to subscribe to the advocate. Um, and thanks, Elizabeth. I was also going to mention that I can include some stuff on those advocacy priorities. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else um, for Jason? Okay, looks like you're um, safe to escape when you have to, Jason. Thanks. Everybody have a good holiday season as well. Same to you. So uh, the next discussion item we have on the agenda is review and finalize the annual report. Um, Marie is not able to be present uh, for another commitment, so I'm going to try to um, facilitate the discussion. I think we've had several versions of that and the, the latest version that we have is one that the officers have reworked and tried to pick up any little typos and anything else. So uh, I think Stephanie is gonna share that. Yep. At this point, we're not trying to wordsmith every word. We're trying to determine whether we've missed anything and uh, hopefully we can uh, um, adopt the final report so that we can forward that to the county commission before our terms expire. So I think what we're gonna do, we're looking at the first page, um, the top of the first page. Can you scroll up a little or down a little or whatever the terminology is? Cause we're not seeing very much of that page. Okay. Yeah. Um, is that so size okay? It's a little bit, large because it's oh, kind of hard okay. to get a it's easy to there that's better can everyone read that okay if anyone's have a problem let me know otherwise we'll stick with this size okay um so on this first page we um reviewed the number of meetings we had which you know we had a lot of meetings um especially the officers um we we fill in on the various local groups and which presentations were made and also um, described what's on our web page now. Um, and then we also include our recommendations for 2023, which are completing the map of public funds to aging services and allocation of ARPA aging dollars, uh, leveraging Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation support to develop a countywide master plan for aging in Washtenaw, and considering the AARP's age-friendly county certification and what the county's role would be. Um, so those are the things that we have on this first page. Does anyone have any discussion about that? If so, please raise your hand. Okay, seeing no hands, we'll go on to the next page. On this page, we put the purpose that was assigned to the Commission on Aging. Uh, we listed our accomplishments and 
uh, described who was on which of the subcommittees Under accomplishments, we have um, that we have initiated uh, a process for mapping funds supporting the aging uh, sector in the county. We have advocated for allocations from the county commissioners to support the aging network, and that is still ongoing. Work with the Healthy Aging Collaborative, which is still ongoing. <laughs> Continue to build and expand partnerships within the county's aging network, and that is ongoing examine the existing infrastructure for um, aging services, pandemic, endemic impact, and areas for improvement that is ongoing. And we initiated the development of a countywide strategy for services to aging adults. Um, does anyone have any discussion on this page? Seeing no hands, we'll go on to the next page. In this um, page are the things that we are in takeaways maybe from the presentations that we had that we encourage the Board of Commissioners to consider. We, we had a presentation on transportation and older adults and uh, some of the things that were identified during that uh, discussion were that transportation services need to be examined on a countywide basis, that coordination and affordability uh, of transportation is a major concern, and that door through door and door to door services are highly sought after services for older adults. We had a presentation on senior housing. And the key takeaways from that presentation were that there's a severe lack of affordable housing in Washtenaw County and that high costs of home repairs impact the ability to remain safely at home. We heard a presentation on a case for senior millage. In that presentation, the takeaways were needs assessment studies and reports from providers indicate the need for services outweighs the existing capacity of providers that other counties supplement state and federal funding with millages to raise additional needed funds. We heard a presentation on ombudsman and nursing homes. Uh, the key takeaways from that presentation were that volunteers play a key role in improving quality through the long-term care ombudsman program. And as the population ages, there will be a greater need for nursing home care or in-home services such as those provided by the My Choice waiver program. We heard a presentation on aging and disabilities in Washtenaw. The key takeaways from that were programs for people with disabilities offer creative solutions to issues facing older adults. There's a lack of coordination between programs for older adults and programs serving people with disabilities. And lastly, we heard a presentation on age-friendly Washtenaw. Uh, we identified that the AARP Age-Friendly Communities Program provides a planning tool for meeting the needs of older adults and that Washtenaw County could is uh, possibly the first county in Michigan to participate if Washtenaw County chooses to do so. And these key takeaways were pulled out of presentations by Elizabeth who did this at, you know, virtually in the dark of night. <laughs> 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 working frantically because we realized we needed to get these key takeaways. And these are things I think that will probably be a map for the next commission to work on, next uh, term of this commission. Are there any comments or discussion on this page? I don't think we have any more pages. Am I correct on that? Yep. Yep, that's so the end. So we can stop sharing. And I'm interested in uh, everyone's opinion on whether we're ready to submit this to the County Board of Commissioners. Or a motion if that is appropriate. I move that we submit it to the County Commissioners. Okay, is there support? I'll second that so that we can discuss it. Okay. So let's you have any discussion that's out there. You know, um, well, well, first of all, I think it's really um, spot on. Um, those are, um, it's well written. Um, I wonder if um, 
I, I feel like I would like to look at it more carefully. And I, um, do we need to vote on it today? We need to pass it today. We don't have to. However, if it's not passed today, it will go to the next um, iteration of the commission and they may or may not choose to submit it. At their yeah. option. Yeah. Because this is our last um, official meeting of the County uh, Commission on Aging until the next term starts. Okay. Well. <clears throat> Anybody else have any discussion, areas of concern, et cetera? Um, Elizabeth and then uh, Ellen. Um, I, I worked uh, with Marie and Marta on, on this and our goal was trying to give a sense of the things um, that we had looked at and um, by outlining the takeaways, the priorities that we heard during our presentations, uh, we tried carefully to write it um, because we can't um, determine what the next iteration of the commission is going to do, um, to write it in a way that gives them and the county commissioners a sense of the issues that had been presented to us so that um, the new membership will be able to look at it and go, okay, this is what has come forth and hopefully give them um, what they need in order to determine their work plan. Okay, that, that's helpful. Yeah. Okay, Ellen? Uh, well, first of all, um, Elizabeth said something I, I thought, so I appreciate that, about the next commission. But I think it was very well written, and I think it was condensed enough so that when you read it, you get a clear picture of what's going on with seniors, um, a very clear picture. It's really written very well. I like the takeaways. There are things that people can remember. And I think um, one of the things we could do is talk to Jason or the, the new commission want, may want to do. I don't know how that works now because of, you know, the schedule. Talk to Jason and go through that and see if that's something that he can bring up at the commission, at the county commission. The, the intent is for this report, if it's acceptable to the, uh, this board, to be submitted to the county commissioners. Right. I guess what I'm saying is I'm I didn't what I meant was that they, they could bring it up to at one of the meetings and say this is what's gone on with the first year of the commission in a very condensed way, because I know they're busy, but I think it would be helpful to bring it up to other commissioners or to send it out with Jason's name on it, highlighting a few of the things. I mean, I don't know what the best way for that to work is, but I think it would be good for the county commissioners to see it in some form. Yeah, and I think, um, and I'll let Elizabeth answer this too, but um, it's my um, feeling that the chair of this board that takes over in the after the first of the year, whoever the chair is at that point, would then take this report and make it into a presentation similarly to what we did last winter and so, and go and speak to the county board of commissioners about that and hopefully initiate discussion. Oh, that, that works. That works for me. I just want out there in some way so people could be focused, see a focus that we have. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And if we had had, uh, if we had gotten this report finished earlier and had been able to adopt it previously, then it probably would be being done this month, but we just ran out of time. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Elizabeth? Well, I think, Marta, your timeline makes a lot of sense because it's Joyce and hey, Jason. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Sorry, Jason. Uh, had pointed out a third of the commissioners will be new. Uh, therefore, uh, presentation when they get started would be a nice way of linking what we've done to what we're hoping to accomplish 
and also be a bit of a chance to inform them, the new commissioners, about the other entities that are working hard on senior issues like um, the Healthy Aging Collaborative and the kinds of work that the Ann Arbor Community Foundation has done. So I think that was the thinking of all the officers that um, looking at a presentation early in the year um, to uh, let um, both the continuing commissioners know what some of the priorities have been and help educate the new commissioners. But with a submission of this before the end of the year, so that the work of everybody on this group gets reflected and appreciated. And without stealing the next discussion too far, you know, it's the officer's intent that this would be part of the orientation for new Commission on Aging members as well. Yeah. So that when they take uh, step onto the Commission on Aging, they'll be able to step on fully oriented as to what's taken place in previous the previous term. Whoever, you know, is left to do that. We don't know, so. Um, well, um, this discussion helps. And um, while I would have liked to have had a chance to look at it in detail, I truly understand the pressing calendar and um, really appreciate the officers taking this on. It's it's very well written and um, I, I am in full support. I, I have to say that Marie did a very large amount of the work and then Elizabeth was the one who went through all the presentations we had and pulled up the key takeaways. So they did almost all the work and I sat around and you know tried to be helpful. So uh, they get all the credit. Uh, Stephen, you had something? Yeah, and, and I apologize because it, um, what you wrote isn't in front of me, but I know that um, sort of ensuring that um, there is a um, people, I guess, that are less represented are part of um, our thinking when we uh, do, you know, sort of commission thinks about issues in older adults in, in Washington County. Is that in there? I just didn't know if that was mentioned and it seemed like we've had enough conversation about making sure that this county is one that's great for all people that um, age in place, so our age in Washington County. We did not specifically address that in the report as it's written right now. However, the bylaws discussions that we've been having um, include um, asking Jason to find a way in which we can make the commission um, more representative without taking away from the uh, ability of each commissioner to name the, the member of the County Commission on Aging from their district. So we had some ideas, but that's part of the bylaws discussion. Yeah, and I wasn't so much thinking about just the Commission on Aging, but just as the Board of Commissioners consider their work um, in support of older adults, whether it's worth highlighting them keeping that in their consciousness. Uh, I don't know if anyone else thinks that that would add value to have one aligned somewhere wherever it's appropriate to, to have in there. Well, I, I think it is appropriate to have it there. You know, I have to say that um, <clears throat> the document might... Um, I thought it stopped kind of abruptly and maybe a um, closing paragraph would would be in order. Um, I don't know whether it could fit there or, um, but just a thought. Stephanie, can you bring that back up again for a minute so we can have a look at that? Um, I'm not sure where we would fit that, but Elizabeth, do you have some thoughts on that? Um, in terms of the size, we were really trying to keep it to be a two pager. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking if we go 
Stephanie, could you go back up to the top? I'm wondering if in that introduction, we might be able to um, put as either in the first. Maybe that one like of the recommendations, uh, which certainly we're doing that in um, uh, by looking at the bylaws is maybe a bullet point and maybe other folks can come up with uh, some words for that that says um, continued emphasis on making the county, uh, not making the county, but um, improving the life of all older adults in the county. Or Steve, you might be able to help me uh, capture a couple of words in there. And how we would be able to then fit it in is maybe um, if we do a little moving on the signature and maybe Marta Larson and comma chair and put out, that'll give us room for another sentence. How about something like um, exploring ways in which the diversity of the county, I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to, uh, is reflected in public programs serving the ages aging? Let's serving say serving older adults. Older adults, yeah. Does that capture, Steve, what you're thinking? Yeah, that feels good. I think that feels good. Um, one other question, just since you pulled up that area, do we feel like we have enough um, um, support and um, so you know I wasn't at the age friendly county certification but I you know I'm very familiar with it and if I was going to prioritize things to talk to recommend it would probably be more about the the millage than I would be a, about that just because of the impact a millage could have on older adults did did we um, I don't know if there would felt like we ever voted or whatever we would need to do but that just seems like that, that to me is maybe a more um, forceful statement about support. I, I fear that this commission has not yet come to a conclusion about whether or not to recommend a millage. So I think maybe that might be a difficult path to follow. Um, yeah, and for some reason, why did I think one of the meetings that we actually wound up um, doing that, but I may be wrong. Um, the other thing we could do is vote now. <laughs> um, I think uh, I see Elizabeth has her hand up, but I want to go back to the the two sentence the sentence that we were just um, working on and say uh, exploring ways in which the diversity of the county can be more completely reflected. Yes. So I think that's excellent. Okay, Elizabeth, you had your hand up. Uh, first of all, in terms of the age-friendly communities, um, I'm sorry you weren't there for the discussion. Um, my sense was that we were really interested, although we cannot bind the, the new membership to any action, we were interested in making sure the discussion continued because it seemed like a potential planning tool that would also, when it's been used in counties in other states, allowed the development of a plan that over years, like a five-year period, there's a coming back and checking to see if the um, planned actions actually have been implemented and how well they've been implemented. Um, and that it seemed to mesh well as a to look at with what the Community Foundation is looking at at trying to develop a master plan. And we've heard this theme from all the providers that 
coordination is an issue about providing services. So that's why uh, it, it came out of the meeting that this would be a recommendation for the future. In terms of the millage, I think we would be not helpful in my personal opinion about recommending right now. There in the current commission, you may remember Jason telling us there was not support for bringing forth a millage. And the compromise that was reached is directing uh, the county administration to come up with a potential plan for implementing a millage and also coming up with a map, if you will, of how county dollars currently are serving older adults. We'll have new commissioners um, in the next year. I think I, as we wrote the takeaways, we tried to highlight the clear statement, say yes to seniors is that their providers and research say there are not enough services for older adults. I think that is a building block that the new Commission on Aging is uh, trying to, is can look at and use. But I think at this point, it would be counterproductive. That's my personal opinion uh, to make a recommendation which the new commissioners can totally ignore <laughs> if they wish. Um, instead, I would encourage any of us who are independently working with Say Yes to Seniors to encourage that group to not wait, but to start having individual discussions with the newly elected commissioners about the kinds of information uh, that they presented to uh, the county commission last June. The earlier they have discussions one-on-one -on -one with commissioners, that's going to set the groundwork for decisions to be made later. And I, I'm afraid that's one thing that kind of gets missed. And I think us as individuals, not as the full commission, if we uh, feel that that's important, need to start having those discussions with our new commissioners right now. Because waiting until the time for the vote from a strategic level is months too late. And it's that one-on-one -on -one discussions and presentations one-on-one. -on -one. For example, I shared the housing presentation in full with my county commissioner, who was just like, that's an incredible presentation. Thank you for sharing it. Is, is kind of, from my experience, how momentum is built. So I'm sorry for kind of going off on a train tangent here, but I don't know if that's helpful. Yes, no, very much so, Elizabeth, and uh, I can support that, um, really, with the rationale that you described on both issues about how important the ARPS age-friendly county certification can be, and also for um, not being overly assertive on the, um, on the millage with the idea that we've gotten to a certain point that's pretty good right now. And they can advocate stronger um, through say yes to seniors as, and with your own commissioner as an individual. I think that's how um, support will be built next. While we're a wonderful commission, we've done wonderful things. Our voice is but a small voice in and not probably the most important one in an individual commissioner's decision-making process, while the voice of her, his constituents 
directly are what's going to be very important in their decision-making process. That's a good point. Does anyone have any other suggestions as to how we should amend this report or can we stop screen sharing? I have a real little one. I think it's the State Commission on services to the aging. And also I think there are a few periods that might have been missing at the end of the takeaways. So I'll go up in the second paragraph. It's the second, the state of Michigan Commission on mm -hmm. services. On services to the aging. Uh, right here. The oh, state no, of Michigan, no one up. State Where of Michigan Co Commission on services. Oh, got it. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, um, is this um is this a three page report? I'm just trying to get a handle here. Yeah. yeah, it's a we wanted to three try pages. to get it to two pages, but we just had too much content, and it was yeah. going to be too crammed to try to fit it into three pages to two pages. So, I see Stephanie going through and fixing the missing periods, which that I think we can trust her to fix that if there's any more. Any other thoughts on this before we move away from screen sharing? Stephen? Um, you know, the one thing that I remember from um, Yvonne Kudney's um, presentation on housing had to do with the definition of affordable housing and the fact that what, what that term um, winds up being one that has to do with percentage of um, income, I think, uh, or something like that, of residents. And so that a lot of what's labeled affordable housing really isn't affordable. And so I didn't know if there, there's a way of, and I don't know how to do this, but maybe something like truly affordable, um, separating it from the definition of affordable housing. Do you remember that, um, we, her comment go, on that? Can we go to the third page, Stephanie? Okay, um, maybe after the sentence, there's a severe lack of affordable housing in Washtenaw County, we should say something like the definition of affordable housing. Well, yeah, or, or just, I was thinking just, well, go ahead, finish what you're gonna say. Because maybe- I work, I work, I actually, I think there should be a separate bullet point, but the de okay. definition of affordable housing um, does not, accurately reflect what is actually affordable to many seniors? Yes. That sounds great. And I would say actually affordable. I think that, no, what is actually affordable? No, no, there you're, you go. You're getting there. And instead of seniors, it should say aging adults. I'm, or older adults, yeah. Older adults, yeah. I think that's good. Uh huh. Yep. Well written. I'll let Marie know some of this was changed, so she can change spacing if she wants. And what? Don't forget to put a period after older adults there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all of this will be, everyone in the Commission on Aging will get a copy of this, if, assuming that we adopt it uh, today. Have we um, used older adults rather than seniors throughout? I think that's a, a good thing to check. Yeah, I think that's a good thing. I think also the, the words older and adults don't need to have cap, start with capital letters. Um, yeah. We need to leave the titles Housing Bureau for yeah. Seniors and say yes to seniors because yeah. those are their titles. Right. So yes, that system. should be older adults. No, actually, that not that in our purpose yeah. yeah so we can't change it yeah we can't 
No. Good point. Looks like we got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So does that, does that uh, help by adding that one sentence to the takeaways? Is that, does that accurately address what you were expressing, Stephen? Yes, very much so. Okay. Ellen? Um, I just wanted to wordsmith a little bit, and I don't usually do that um, because I like it. But uh, we, 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 the one we just wrote, the piece that added um, affordable housing, I should, I think the word should should be there. I can't see it right now. Uh, where's the housing? Uh, the definition of affordable housing does not accurately. I think it should read, in my mind, the definition of affordable housing should reflect what is uh, actually affordable to older adults. I guess I'm gonna slightly disagree with you here because I think that everyone would agree that that is true, but I'm not sure everyone is aware that it does not currently accurately address what's affordable. I think that's the point. I think does not accurately reflect is the key point in that sentence to me. I, I may be the only one who feels that way. No, I, I think you're right, Marta. I, I think it's a statement that um, reflects exactly what was shared with us. I do think it should say actually affordable for many older adults. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, Ellen, how we're going to resolve this. I, I, I'm fine with it. I just want, for me, I like the, the should, uh, and I understand it, um, because many people who are working and comfortable can are part of the affordable housing, because it's, I think, 80,000 or something. So, um, I agree. I just, I like the more positive. I can live with this. My life is not going to change. And this, <laughs> may, and this may be, in all honesty, uh, I think you and, and, um, and Elizabeth said, maybe it gives them pause to think about, uh, people pause to think about what is affordable housing and what we're doing. Yeah. So thank you. I think a formatting thing, the senior housing title needs to be pulled up a little bit so it matches the top of the text that it's, there you go. And the other, um, yeah. But you can sort of, Stephanie, you can sort of clean that up. Anything else before we stop sharing this? This this has been a helpful discussion and and um, has given at least for me a chance to really hone in on a few things. So it's been very helpful. Thank you. Okay, I see no hands saying that people want to work on this more. So let's stop sharing and uh, see where we stand on whether we want to adopt this or not. Margaret? What did, did you want to see? You raised, your hand. you raised your hand, so. Oh, I thought you wanted us to indicate if we're ready to vote. That's what I, I'm asking. Are yeah. people ready to vote or is there more discussion that needs to be had? Okay, well, maybe we'll have a motion and see where we go. Uh, we do have a motion. That's right. That's right. I forgot where we were in the process. I'm sorry. So Stephanie, would you reiterate the motion and uh, who moved and supported so that I can get back on track here? Yeah, so uh, Ellen moved and Margaret seconded that the uh, 2022 annual report be submitted to the Board of Commissioners. Okay. So is there any last discussion before we vote on this? If not, we'll have Stephanie call the roll. 
Marta Larson? Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Alan Offen? Yes. Steve Stein? Yes. And Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Okay, so the motion is adopted and uh, we will have uh, Stephanie turn this over to Peter and Jason to be submitted to the County Board of Commissioners and also to make sure that everyone on the Commission on Aging gets a copy of the final approved version. Um, excellent. Next thing up is the bylaws uh, recommendation. And as Jason said, we're not gonna be able to take that up today uh, because he's still working on that suggestions. The two things that we were looking at, hopefully uh, addressing in the future bylaws amendment, whenever that comes up, were um, staggering terms so that we don't have a completely new, the risk of a completely new commission every two years. Um, and also um, perhaps expanding the Commission on Aging by adding a few more, maybe two more at-large seats so that some of the diversity concerns can be addressed more completely. But not to say that that's what will happen in the future, but those are the things that were discussed as possible uh, bylaws recommendations. So that will be hunted forward to the next Commission on Aging to discuss. Uh, next item on the agenda is new Commission on Aging member orientation process, and Elizabeth was going to briefly address that. Yeah, the officers um, discussed um, how best to um, be able to orient new commissioners, because obviously we're going to have some new folks because we have actual vacancies now, so we know we're going to have some new people and we may have some uh, new people in other uh, county commission districts. So um, we thought that um, perhaps uh, we could pull together something to meet in January with the newly named commissioners to review the work we've done, which would involve uh, walking folks through the first uh, two uh, yearly reports, the more extensive one we submitted last um, March and then this one. So also then um, exposing folks to the excellent presentations we've had this year. I volunteered to go through, we've got recordings of all the meetings, but some of the approval of the minutes and stuff isn't too interesting to new people. So to identify the minutes where there's the actual presentation so that new commissioners could look at the video and go right to say minute 15 of the meeting, see the presentation and then stop. So I'm gonna work on that uh, this month, uh, looking at the um, uh, videos of our meetings. So that will be available. Um, and I don't know if I'll get named to the uh, commission again or not, but I volunteered to be available to do that mm -hmm. sit down. And I believe Marie said she would be willing to help out so we can keep the momentum going. Yeah, I think all three outgoing officers, I'm including yeah. myself, have volunteered to, no matter what our status on the, the Commission on Aging is next term, to meet with anyone who's newly appointed and give them all this information that Elizabeth just outlined. So we will do that sometime in January. Does anybody have any thoughts or suggestions or comments on that? I think it's an excellent idea and thanks for doing that. Yeah, um, making it easy for them. Um, really appreciate that. Well, I know that we've covered a tremendous amount of territory in this two-year term, <laughs> and yeah. it would be a shame it, to have the Commission on Aging have to start all over again. So <laughs> it would be great if they can just pick up where we've left off and go. So thanks, Elizabeth, for sort of summarizing what we talked about. I don't have a report from the chair because I have nothing new to report, um, although I will say that it's been an interesting year and I appreciate everybody putting up with me learning how to be the chair. 
Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's next on the Commission on Aging. We have no new business. Uh, we had a last meeting talked about a tentative date for the, the new commission to get started. And we realized in the officers meeting that we had deviated from the pattern that we've been having of the first Friday of the month by setting that tentative date. So we're proposing that the first meeting of the next commission be February 3rd, uh, which will give them, but that will be the organizational meeting. Um, and they don't have to meet, they don't have to meet on that day at that time if they don't want to, but that's what we're proposing. And we would ask the county to put that in their agenda so they can determine whether they want to do that or not. And if they do, then that would be the first meeting of the next uh, iteration of the Commission on Aging. So we'll forward that to the county for consideration. Is there anything else anyone has to say before we reclaim a whole boatload of time? Uh, Ellen and then Stephen. I, I did not reapply. So there will be someone new representing my area and uh, my commissioner in District 7. Um, and I'm very pleased to have met all of you. I have awe at what you can do in, in working together. So it is something I remember, and I think it's making a contribution, which is really important to me, is making a contribution in our community. It's something I firmly believe in. And I, I need to say that the hail yes is something that my husband had in his office yes. many years. And it's in my daughter's um, house now. And so every time I see it, I have joy. And I need to say that I, working with you, I talk about all of you really impressively behind your back. But having all of you here, and of course, watching Hell Yes has been, makes my Friday morning worthwhile. Thank you so much. Okay, um, let's see. Stephen, you're, you're up next. Um, yes, I just wanted to say I also did not apply for the coming year. I think I wanted to live what I talked about in regards to uh, adding diversity to the group. So my hope is that that will happen in our district and that we can have a more diverse commission on aging to make sure that all people are represented. So, but it has been a great pleasure working with all of you and you know, really excited about all that has been accomplished and all that will be accomplished. Elizabeth? Uh, Ellen and Stephen, thank you so much for everything you've contributed and the special expertise. I suspect you folks are not going to be forgotten. And uh, I imagine some future members will be calling on you folks to uh, continue to add expertise uh, if you're willing. And I would also like to thank Marta too, especially stepping up to um, fill in as chair when she hadn't originally expected to fill that role. And you've guided us expertly and uh, sensitively and managed to keep all us uh, vocal folks on task throughout the meeting. So thank you so much. You did give me an idea, Elizabeth, and that is we should add to the orientation for the next Commission on Aging that the incoming commissioners should contact the previous commissioner from their district Ooh. about issues. So can you add that to our list? Yes, that's a great idea. Um, so that means Stephen and Ellen, you're gonna get called on again, hopefully. Yeah, and I, I will say you won't hear the last of me. You know, I think um, hating Elizabeth and others um, feelings about how you can still make it different outside of the commission. So, um, I'm sure I'll we'll be doing the same. Okay, Margaret, you're up next. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to thank all of the officers. Um, uh, you, you've done great work, taken the lead for so many things and done a fabulous job. So um, I'm grateful okay. and thank you very much. Okay, anybody else have anything? to bring up before we close this meeting in the, uh, the 2021 to 2022 Commission on Aging. 
Ellen, you still have your hand up, but I suspect you just forgot to drop it. You're muted, oh. Ellen. We'll say that for the officially say that for the last time. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Um, I have a tendency not to, to do remember that, but um, the person, uh, one of the people interested, I don't know who applied, is somebody who has a, a great background. I talked to one of the individuals, um, and I'm hoping that um, just she has a great background, a lot of knowledge. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I think it'll be um, an, a great addition. Just to say that. And I too, I'm glad Margaret said it, wanted to thank the officers. They've done a lot and focused a lot. And I think it's hard to do the work and keep us all on track. So thank you. Well, there's one thing that I have to say about this group, and that is that we don't have any shrinking violence in this group. <laughs> and uh, I think it, that can sometimes seem difficult, but I think in this case, it made it a pretty high performing bunch. So I appreciate that. Okay, last call. If not, we'll have a motion. I see Margaret moving. I move we adjourn. Okay. I support. Okay, it's been moved and supported. Um, this motion can be voted on by acclamation. So raise, raise your thumb, wait, raise your hand, say yay, whatever you wanna do. Um, and the final meeting of the 2022 Commission on Aging is hereby adjourned. And thank you very much, everyone. Have a great holiday season. Yes. Ah. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.